Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. These are more casual um, because I feel like God wants to talk to your hearts. Uh, those of you who are either hustling or you're out on the streets, teenagers, or, you know, run away, or you have done some dastardly deeds that you don't want anybody to know about, and you know God knows it all, so you have given up on any hope ever of, of getting back in with God's good, good graces. Let me tell you this. God knows what drove you to this point in your life. Don't give up on his love for you. Now, when I was doing uh, ministry, I was um, in a, um, a pod, so to speak, where there were female inmates. And this one woman was sitting in the front and another woman was sitting toward the back. Now, the one sitting toward the back, God moved on me right after I finished singing a song to tell her that he has not forgotten her, that she is not invisible, that she is not a wallflower, that she is not insignificant, but very important to him. Now, I didn't know that woman. That woman did not know me, but she busted out crying. And that's when I realized God, you know, that I had heard God correctly and and she had a nerve that needed to be touched. She was a part in her heart that was extremely vulnerable. And God blanketed that area with his love to begin a healing for her. Now, there was another woman in the prison who was sitting in a jail, who was sitting toward the front. And she was sitting butch, hard, legs crossed, uh, sitting there looking like, yeah, okay, you're going to bore me too? What's up? And this woman, I couldn't tell if she was Middle Eastern or what, but she sat there with uh, her legs crossed like a man, her arms crossed, head cocked to the side with the gangster lean. And her, the look in her eyes was so cold. And in all honesty, had I gone by a human uh, perception, I would have uh, concluded that she was beyond the point of help. I would have concluded that she was irreparable, that, that she was damaged goods for life. And that was the end of that. Now, and she just came just so she wouldn't be bored sitting up on her, on her cot. Well, what happened? was God explicitly told me to tell that woman of all. She was the hardest looking woman in the whole group. And it looked like there were maybe about 80, almost 100, maybe 80, 85 women. God told me specifically to tell that woman, the hardcore looking one, how much he loved her. Now, I can't remember everything I said. I was under inspiration at the time. But I remembered how God was saying to tell her, not all, he didn't love her in a way like the cliche, God loves you and so do I. It was a very personal message to her. He was letting her know to read between the lines. I, have, I was there with you when you went through what you went through. I was there with you when you were hurt when you were humiliated, when those things were done to you. I was there with you. I know the pain you carry, and I can heal that pain. Now, I'm not going to try to remember everything, but as I was talking to her, and I believe this message is for you. You're looking at me. You're, you're, you're cynical. You're skeptical. You're not sure if you want to laugh and move on to the next video. But I honestly believe God is saying this to somebody who's looking at this video. You're looking at the video. You don't know what to make of it. But God is trying hard to reach you. God loves you. He was there when those things were done to you. He was there when you were hurt. 
He was there when you were disappointed. He was there when you were humiliated. When you had nobody there to protect you. When you were violated. He was there. And it doesn't matter what you have turned out to be right now. Because that is not a challenge for God. It may seem like a challenge for you. But it's not for God. Well, let me go back to this young lady. She was sitting there, and all that hardness started to go. And her face began to contort, and it was just going through changes. And then she leaned forward, and she buried her face in her arms. And she was crying so hard that her whole body was shaking. She never lifted up her face till the service was over and we had to leave before they left. One thing that never happened, they never liked us to go to the same place. They didn't want them to, to form attachments. But I ended up back at the exact same room. The very next Sunday, I was scheduled to be there. And this, I'm telling you, this inmate, I have to say it like this, this inmate walked in like a happy little lady. She was so exuberant. She was so lit up. She was glowing with joy, warmth, and openness. Her whole, her whole physical uh, demeanor, the whole way she carried herself, her carriage was totally different. She was full of joy. She wasn't on guard. She wasn't hard. She was tender. She was sweet all over. And, I'm, and I heard her turn around and tell somebody, this is going to be good. Like a kid getting ready to get on a ride at Disneyland or, or an amusement park. It was such a difference. It showed me when God touches a hurting heart, it's permanent. Let him touch your heart. Ask him to touch your hurting heart. Don't just sit there and try to drink it away. Don't try to cuss it away. Don't try to front it off. Go to God. Even if you feel like a sissy doing so, be a sissy. Let the tears roll, baby, because therein lies your healing. Therein lies your deliverance. You have no idea the power of God's love and how much he loves you. Take the plunge, please. I beg you, I know what it's like to live with self-hatred, and I know what it's like to know that I know that I know that God loves me, and I'm a totally different person, just like that inmate, just like the lady who walked in all excited and exuberant. When God's love changes you, you're changed for good.